Good morning, everybody. So we're now starting to learn quite a bit more about Anthony Quinn Warner as police are really looking at his digital footprint. They've been able to do a forensic audit of electronics, computers, laptops that have come out of his residence. And the puzzle is starting to come together a little bit more. And we talked about the fact that his brother had passed away in 2019 of cancer. This allowed uh, the properties to come into his possession. His brother died without a will. Now, presumably his father who died in 2011 left the homes to the brother. When the brother passed, the properties became the possession of Anthony Warner. Now, his mother, as we recall, is still living and had sued to get one of the properties back. Now, Miss Michelle Swing did give the property back to the mother. But some more things that we're learning about Anthony Warner, he also had cancer and had told acquaintances, friends, that he was dying. He had been giving away his possessions, which we understand now why the properties were being transferred to Michelle Swing. Now, why it didn't go to his mother, we don't know. Perhaps he wanted, with his mother's advanced age, it could have been a situation where he wanted some type of custodial relationship over the property. Again, that's all conjecture. We don't know. He blamed Bell South for the death of his father due to dementia. And that struck a chord when I heard of that because my father also retired from Bell South, is in good health. My dad is 75, I'm 40. And uh, he shows no signs of dementia, so thankfully, but uh, it just was kind of crazy to hear that similar pathway that my family took, how we see these people that would do these sorts of things and we think, what kind of people can that be? My dad, I'm sure, interacted with this man's father at some point more than likely. And that is something I'm actually gonna have to talk to my dad about to figure out if he did any have any connection with his family back in the day. So we know that um, the why of giving away the properties, giving away his possessions. One of the things too that police are saying is that Mr. Warner thought he would be a hero. He thought his death where he clearly try to avoid hurting anybody. You know, regardless, he put lots of people in danger, but he thought he was doing everything he could to avoid hurting people. He thought he would be held a hero. His, obviously the focal point of this explosion, this suicide bombing, was to take out the AT&T transmission building, that hub, which he did. But he thought that it would strike a major blow against 5G, that it would be seen as a heroic effort that people would champion his cause and that people would demand an end to this technology the worldwide. Now, having this mistrust in 5G, demanding that we have tests done, demanding that we know more about it, is not a bad thing. Blowing up part of your city is a very bad thing putting anybody in harm's way. There are people in Australia, it has been a, a really a big issue in Australia, where people have been opening fire on workers at cell towers, have been lighting fires at cell towers that weren't even 5G technology. So now this is not a heroic effort, but police are digging in more and more to find out more about this guy but I had said in a previous video, or I had said in a previous comment, I think it was in a comment, this was the way that Anthony Warner had decided he wanted to go out and he was gonna make a statement and he was gonna get his 15 minutes of fame. And maybe it wasn't about the fame, maybe he thought he was doing something to benefit mankind. Regardless, this man is not a hero and he won't be remembered as such. He'll be remembered as a joke, an idiot, 
who destroyed people's livelihoods, who injured people, who put a city in danger, who ruined Christmas for a lot of people. We're so thankful there wasn't more of a loss of life. But I think for those that are trying to think of this as a a government hit piece, a CIA, FBI, shadow government, deep state job, I think we have to really face facts as this was a very disturbed individual who was at the end of his life, who had in recent years lost his father and his brother. And he wanted to go out in a grand way and be held a hero. And that's where we are. Thank you all as always for listening, for commenting. I read each and every one. I'm trying to, while doing the normal day to day that you all do as well, trying to get around to answering as many of your comments as I can. But trust me, I do see every one of them. And I appreciate it. Have a great day, everybody.